So this week's playing the ball column with Martin Devlin, and it's a bit of a Shakespearean quandary you're posing to spark or not to spark. Uh, obviously, you're, you're talking about spark sport here and sort of the, the question around dividing our pay-per-view resources between Sky and Spark and, and other channels. So, what, you know, what's your opinion on this, Martin? Yeah, hi, well, nice to see you. Look, and, um, and I just want to make the point very clear right at the start, and I've made this in the column as well, that I'm not, I'm not pro or anti and I'm not, you know, bagging Spark and I'm not, um, you know, rubbing up Sky or, or anything like that. What, I'm, what the point of it is, is that uh, the column is that simply Spark have made a big song and dance now that they've got the Rugby Women's World Cup rights for the end of the year. They're also currently in a, in a process, we understand, with TV3 slash New South to buy the Rugby World Cup men's rights France next year. Remember that they host, they, they had the rights in 2019. And just with all the talk that's been going on lately about the Black Ferns, um, about women's rugby, women's sport in general, about you know getting more people to be engaged, more people to be watching, more participation, all of those kind of things. I just find, and it's only my opinion, of course, but you know, I don't know how that works when you have to pay to watch these things. And and I and I and I fear for the the long term future of both the playing numbers and the spectator numbers if you aren't getting a massive catchment of people that can actually see your product. Now, on Monday, so um, this uh, column goes out on Tuesday, so it'll be last night. Uh, the Black Ferns played their first match at home in over a year. I think um, the last time that they played was on tour last year against England, France, when we got walloped by all a full massive what twenty nine point average over four tests or something. Uh, playing in Australia in this Pacific series. That game, you know, live on free to air. Um, but the rest of the tournament, you know, it's all on Spark. And, you know, the thing is, is in this economic times in which we live, which, you know, people seem to be, from what we're being told, don't have as much spending money, don't have as much available cash, and that's only going to get worse. Cost of living is spiraling. We know that petrol prices are going through the roof. Supermarket, you just know yourself when you go there, it's costing you more money and things. And I think... For a lot of people, when it comes down to what's called luxury spending, which is things like pay-per-view TV, Netflix, it's whether or not you think, hmm, I really like that pair of sneakers, but maybe these ones here might last me another six months or a year, whether or not they're going to be frivolous enough to spend that money on these sports. And if they're not, what a shame that is, because you know you can sit there and self-promote as much as you like, saying that you know we're supporting these sports and we've got these rights, but ultimately it comes down to eyeballs on the television. That's the measuring stick. You know, the buzzword these days, Will, is metrics. That's the measuring stick. You can talk about it as much as you like. And, you know, it's it's positive proof now that New Zealand cricket selling those rights to Spark hasn't worked in terms of people who are watching. The presentation, as I explained in the column, has been great. It's been slick. No, no complaints there. But it's as a sport, and I talk to a lot of past cricketers, a lot of cricket fans. I'm a cricket fan myself. The Lord's Test is going on. I've got Spark myself. Just, you know, I don't know how many people are actually tuning in and watching it. And this is, these are the kind of figures that we really need to be told because when you're having an argument like this or having discussions like this, the one thing that does count is positive proof. And the one thing they won't give us is those numbers. Now, I've worked long enough in this game and broadcasting for almost 30 years that when you have good ratings and good ratings figures, well, everyone gets to know. You just pile out the PR press releases about that. The fact that cricket is... Stum and and Spark won't tell us either. You know they'll give us figures for, for free to wear on TV One. Well, they, that's TV One. I mean, you know, you and me could sit here doing this on TV One, we get half a million viewers. You know, that's that's it. But that's not the pay per view viewers. And and until they're actually honest enough, forthright enough, then you know I think that this is a very valid thing to raise. Is is it good for the sport? And is it going to be productive for the sport in the long term to have the sport exclusive on pay per view? I don't think it is. That's my that was my what my column is about. Yeah, there seems to be a bit of tension between, uh, I suppose, the sponsorship model where maybe you 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 wouldn't mind going free to wear if you're gonna it's promise your sponsors a, a wider, broader you know market or eyeballs as you say, versus perhaps what Spark is doing you know and it's really the subscription that they're aiming at. They want to get more people using their Spark you know telco services. Um, are you, do you just think overall there's too much? commercial imperative to some of these um, agreements that sports are signing with. Look, I do. You know, and, and I understand it as well. I mean, from you know, an economic, economic point of view, it all, it all makes sense for them. But it doesn't make sense if, in the end, no one's going to your supermarket and no one's buying. You know, you could make the best pair of jeans in the world, Will. What say no one buys them? What say no one comes into the shop to buy them? 
you know, because all of a sudden it's $100 to get into the shop to buy them. So, you know, and these are the questions that rugby's got to look seriously at, cricket's got to look seriously at. But just in terms of the Blackburns, you know, I did a column in the NBR a few weeks back saying that I thought that now was the perfect time for, I suppose, not a brave sponsor, but a sponsor who's actually got some real sort of forethought and some, and I think some uh, some creative schutz part to actually get involved with the Blackburns. You know, when they're at their lowest level, when the mass media is talking about damning reviews and everything, well, this is a team of, of real hope, real courage. They've got fantastic stories, great athletes. They're really engaging when you meet the women that are playing in that. Wayne Smith's on board. Well, he's the professor. There's no better coach. We're up against it with the underdogs at the World Cup. If you want to create some momentum and get the country behind it, how do you do that when you're asking them to pay $150 to watch it? And I know that they'll cry about it. They'll go, oh, look, it's on free to wear. Free to wear, it's not on free to wear. It's free to wear come semifinals and finals. You know, if you want to create momentum, you've got to get people in right from the very start. Now, when they had the Rugby World Cup rights for the men in 2019, I think it was about $150. I think in the end they came out and they gave us those figures. Around about 170,000 people bought um, bought that package. And you do the figures, 170,000 multiplied by 100. I mean, you took quite a few million dollars in a nice, tidy profit. Does Spark really need to make another three or four million out of rugby and women's rugby? Do they really? I mean, I've been a Spark customer for decades. I've been a telecom customer before that. One of the dumbest economic decisions this country's ever made. You know, here's an organization making a billion dollars a year. So what do they do? Uh, they sold it for a billion. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, it could be making money for the country. We could be reinvesting this at the moment. That's another aside, isn't it? But just in terms of the people that want to watch women's rugby, are they the same kind of people that can afford to pay to watch women's rugby? And that's not a question that I don't think that Spark or the Rugby Union can genuinely answer. And if they do give us an answer, it's not the answer that they want to give us. And so I think there's a real conflict going on here. Um, would it mean that people go around to other people's places, go and watch it at the pub, go and watch it, whatever? I don't know. But just in terms of establishing a grassroots following for this, which it deserves, because it's a great product. But rugby's struggling at the moment, Will. You know, look, you know, they can't sell out super rugby grounds. The All Blacks can't sell out a test match. You know, so to think that women's rugby and the Blackburns are going to sell out and get hundreds and hundreds of thousands of viewers on Spark, you're living in Thailand. It's, it's not, it's not going to happen. And it would be so disappointing to me if in the end... You know, we found those figures and there was 10,000 people had bought it or something like that. How is that good for the women's game? Sure, it looks good on your balance sheet. Great. But is that really what, what the purpose of what they're trying to achieve is? Maybe it is for Spark. It's certainly not for New Zealand rugby. And it's certainly not for the women's side of New Zealand rugby. Well, wherever you're watching, let's hope they did all right last night, back in their winning ways. Um, that's the playing the ball column with Martin Devlin. Have a good week, mate. Yeah, you too.